So um, there's epilepsy syndromes, and I'll touch on a couple of them, and, uh, and some of them are not as important to this lecture, but I just wanted to at least introduce some of the names to guys. So um, just interestingly enough, because I'm, I'm sort of an art buff, that I have noticed that, especially in a lot of the Christian art, that there has been lots of depictions of seizures in art. And in, what is this, in the 2009 Epilepsy and Behavior, someone actually looked at all of these paintings. And interestingly enough, they said St. Valentine is like, I guess, the, the saint, patron saint for people with seizures, because a lot of these paintings were with him. So this is one of the paintings from the 1700s. It was a ceiling fresco in Germany. And then I'm gonna just enlarge the part that I want to talk about. This is a baby that, this is usually the posture of an infantile spasm. So the extension of the arms and legs is what an infantile spasm would look like in a baby. And then you see that they have, in this picture, St. Valentine is kind of blessing the people around him. And then you see, oops, these demons rising from the child's head. So it's just interesting how people have shown this in art. So the absan seizures, or those staring spells, can be actually associated with an epilepsy syndrome. Usually the onset is between the four to eight year old group. And then the, the same thing that we had talked about before. There's impaired school performance. There's inattention. They look like they're daydreaming. Um, and really, it's the cessation of what they're doing and staring, and then immediately going back to what they were doing. But they're usually amnestic for the events. So there's holes in their learning. There are holes in their memory. And these seizures are brief, but they can, sometimes they can happen like hundreds of times a day. Um, usually, these seizures do go away by young adulthood, and their MRIs are generally normal, and there's a specific treatment, and they usually respond to the medication at the succamide. And just interesting, there's, this is a picture of what their EEG would look like. It's very typical to have these three per second spikes in absence seizures. Benign Rolandic epilepsy, again, is a childhood epilepsy between the ages of three and 13, um, generally with seizures ending in late adolescence. And these are brief, hemifacial, and motor. So usually it affects one, type of, one part of the face. And then some of those somatosensory symptoms, like the tingling, the numbness. And they usually happen all at night. These children are intellectually normal. Their MRIs are normal. And um, most of the time, you see the abnormalities in the EEG at night because a lot of these seizures happen in the night. And this is what benign Rolandic epilepsy looks like on an EEG with the spikes in that corner. So juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, these are those things that we were talking about before with the jerks. This usually presents in later adolescence and early childhood. And a lot of patients say present in, around puberty. They don't necessarily talk about having a seizure, but when you talk to them and get their history, they'll say, every morning when I get up, I drop my toothbrush. They have these jerks in the morning, and they're dropping things, especially when they wake up. So those are the type of questions we ask when people have potentially these type of seizures. And then as, as, they get, as the um, brain gets more activated as time goes on, then they actually have seizures. But um, initially, it can present with dropping things. And seizures, these seizures are very amenable to being um, activated by sleep deprivation, alcohol use the night before, fatigue, and stress. And this is like that late high school, college year. So all of those things are kind of difficult to control in this age group to begin with. A lot of times there is a family history. Again, the MRIs are normal, and they have good um, response to medication. So um, there, I'm just going to mention this briefly. There's a lot of like young childhood infantile syndromes. 
Um, I just wanted to mention the infantile spasms because sometimes when kids are very, very young, like in that first year of life, sometimes parents don't know what's normal and not. And they don't know that these subtle things could possibly be seizures. So flexion, extension of the extremities. So they look like they're doing sit-ups, but kids that age should not be able to do that. So if you see anything like that in family members or hear a family member saying, oh, like my three-month-old looks like they're doing sit-ups, that's not a normal thing. So it's just something to watch out for because sometimes they can present that way. And sometimes, and a lot of times when kids have infantile spasms, it does portend more of these difficult epilepsy syndromes in that age group. And they have very abnormal EEGs. And this is an example of the abnormalities that are seen in those type of infantile spasms and those syndromes. So another very common scenario where seizures can occur, fevers. So in children, simple febrile seizures typically are between three months and five years. They're generalized only. So if a baby or a young child starts having a seizure that starts on one side of the body, now it's probably not a febrile seizure. It's probably related to either an abnormality in the brain or a seizure syndrome. They're usually not greater than 15 minutes. And usually it's one episode per fever episode. And usually it's when the temperature is going up. So if kids who tend to have febrile seizures, you don't want their fevers to go up quickly. So they really need to be um, aggressive with the Tylenol, the Motrin, or even just putting cool clots on them because you don't, it's that time where the peak, where the, they're going from afebrile to a high fever is when they're most susceptible. And sometimes to, this can be after a fever because of an infection or even a vaccination. There's usually a family history of febrile seizures. They have normal, normal neurologic examination, but with the first febrile seizure, if there's any sign of meningeal irritation, that typically lumbar punctures are done to rule out meningitis. And treatment is really not with seizure medication, but treating the infection and fever reduction. And there's a very low risk of developing afebrile seizures later in life if it's a sim simple febrile seizure. On the flip side, complex febrile seizures are ones that last long. They're greater than 15 minutes. They can present either with partial seizures or with secondary generalization. So like I was saying with the simple, it's the whole body. With the partial, if it starts on one side and spreads to the other, it's probably not just a febrile seizure. It's probably something else going on. And usually these people have a developmental or a neurologic abnormality. And there's also family history of afebrile seizures. And where and the prognosis, if there's, in, if there's two or more of these risk factors listed above, they are at higher risk for developing epilepsy.